Hi, this is Heather Orr with Bootleg Legal. Today's lesson is gonna be on raising capital. So what does that mean? Anytime a business needs money, that it's not self-funding its own growth, you're gonna to need to raise capital from outside sources. Uh, there are about five general ways that this can happen. Number one, you can raise it from your own capital, right? Your personal fund, take equity out of your house, take money out of your bank account, put it into your business, okay? Um, and then the, two, the second way is to reinvest capital in your business as it grows by basically not paying yourself distributions and putting most of the money back into the business. Um, third is raising capital from friends and family. Um, this is anybody you already knew, somebody you're related to. I don't know why I feel the need to explain that to you, um, but it's somebody that you have a pre-existing relationship with that agrees to give you money um, to help grow your company. Four, capital from outside sophisticated investors. Uh, these could be angel investors. These could be venture capital investors. Uh, and then five is a lending, a loan from a bank or other lending institution. So I'm gonna briefly talk about each one so you have a general idea because how you structure your company at the onset um, may be um, affected by the your end goal or a capital raising goal that might be you know, a year or two or three down the road, but it's something you need to think about at the time that you're forming your company so that you can make sure that you have access to it. So number one, friends and family. You're raising money from people that you know and They've agreed to give it to you, and they tend to be less picky about what the terms are, whether it's equity or debt, um, and often, all so, so, so often, there's no written agreement whatsoever. This happens quite a lot. Um, it's still very important to reduce those agreements to writing. Um, people often disregard the importance of documenting a transaction with family, um, but your family and your friends those are the disputes that when they arise can not only affect your business, but they can affect your personal life. And the easiest way to prevent a dispute from arising is to actually sit down and do the work of making sure you're on the same page of explaining to them what rights they have. Like you're a passive investor. You don't have rights to manage the company. You don't have audit rights or information rights. You're a passive investor who's gonna get distributions and we'll get a distribution if we sell the company, right? Um, and then explain, put it all in writing and make sure that they're on the same page. Also for securities purposes, there's some disclosures you're gonna wanna have um, in your agreement to make sure that you are not running afoul of securities regulations. Okay, that's easy, friends and family. Uh, a lot of people are gonna wing this one and nothing I say is probably gonna change their mind, but I have litigated so many friends and family investments over the years. Okay, outside investors. Raising money from outside investment uh, investors can often feel like winning the lottery. Um, people get so stoked. I've got VC, I've got angel investors willing to give me money. Um, that must mean that not only is my business valuable, that it's gonna blow up, right? It's gonna be wildly successful because these people who know what they're doing are willing to invest in me. Um, so, so often companies are wrong about this. Angel investments are milder. They tend to come with less strings attached. And um, often you can continue to maintain control of your business and you can just take their money and share money with them when you make it. Um, and those tend to be a little bit less problematic. Venture capital investors, this is how they work. And it's imperative that people understand how they work. A venture capital fund is gonna pick let's just for ease of conversation say that they'll pick 10 companies in their portfolio to invest in. And once they invest in them, they force them, they put the pedal to the metal, they force very rapid growth. Venture capitalists aren't interested in incremental gains. They need the, the grand slam. And so what they're gonna do is they're gonna take those 10 companies and they're gonna put the pedal to the metal, they're gonna make them grow as fast as possible, and they only need one or two grand slams, or even one grand slam and a home run, in order to get the returns that they're, you know, that the fund expects them to get. And they're perfectly okay if the other 10 fail. 
And so they don't let companies grow organically. They force rapid growth on everybody in hopes that one out of 10 or two out of 10 of them might actually work. And they're fine if it doesn't work in the other ones. So be very careful of venture capital investment. Um, it's more appropriate for you know tech companies who intend to grow rapidly anyway and need to grow rapidly really to box out competitors. Um, that's a situation in which you're gonna have to grow rapidly no matter what. So you know you might as well take capital from somebody who's gonna help you get there and might provide the expertise to help you get there. And the last way to get capital from outside sources when you're not self-funding or growing incrementally by reinvesting profits, the last way is a bank or lending institution. So this can look like a bridge loan that says, hey, you give me this much just to give you through the next six months, uh, you know, at which point I expect to be profitable um, and, be, and to be able to pay you back or start paying you back. Um, they can be long-term loans. They can be lines of credit. The, you know, people... Credit gets a bad reputation, right? Because it's automatic interest. Whereas equity, which is what you're going to see with usually friends and family investment, and what you're definitely going to see with venture capital investment, um, equity works like, hey, they're taking a risk on you. If you don't make money, they don't make money. You're not stuck paying them back regardless. With a loan, you're stuck paying them back regardless. And you're stuck paying interest regardless. And if your business doesn't have a long history, they may often require you to personally guarantee it. So that corporate shield you think you have that protects your personal assets goes away the moment you sign a personal guarantee on these loans. So you wanna make sure it's something that your business can reasonably afford the payments on. <laughs> um, and you want to make sure that the terms are fair and will allow you to grow. Um, but if you can make those things happen, if it can be a loan that is highly workable with reasonable interest rates, that has payments that you can afford, often a loan is a better idea than great giving away equity because you can pay a loan off, but you often don't have the right to kick out an investor um, by paying them back. You're usually in it for a very for the long haul with them until there's an exit event. You know, they get acquired or merge or uh, whatever, an exit event, or they close, whatever the exit event is. Um, that's usually the point at which you can leave your venture capital or your angel investors or your friends and family behind. But if you have a loan, it's on your terms. You can you can pay it off early, assuming you don't have a prepay but prepayment penalty, which I would say try to not have a prepay prepayment penalty. Um, but yeah, that's that's a summary of the different types of capital raising that you can do when you're growing a business. Um, there's no one size fits all depending on your industry, depending on what your company is, depending on how, your, your own tolerance for growth and how much you want to work, um, and depending on whether you want to really give power over your company to other people. All of these factors should be considered, um, but I, would, I will warn against people thinking that venture capital is the best case scenario. In certain circumstances it is, but I want you to be mindful of the risks involved, and I want you to be mindful that you, the very thing that you think might mean that your company is going to make it, which is being selected by a venture capital firm, might be the very thing that causes its undoing. So tread lightly. Obviously, you're going to need a counsel if you have venture capital investment. Um, but probably for all of these, um, aside from self-growth um, or investing your own money, aside from, well, even when you invest your own money, you should have a promissory note um, written to the company so that later as you grow and you might give equity to the employees, the company is still owes you that money back or it increases your percentage of your equity. So I would even document any money that you give to your company and for tax reasons. Um, you're going to want to document that as well. So um, good luck.